So now, after watching those last few videos that I had for you with all the you know exploding dummies and things like that, we have a pretty good idea of what arc flash is. So now, in this video, I want to talk to you about how to prevent that to happening to you. Now, there's two ways to prevent this. It's A, lockout, tagout, and B, you can use arc flash protection. Now, there's some kind of interesting things. We're going to start off with um, lockout tagout, and then we're going to move on to um, arc flash protection. The main difference is lockout tagout is when you're making those repairs, you're going to actually lock out the item, make sure that the energy is completely isolated, while you would use arc flash protection for when you need to go in and test something and it's under, it has life power to it, things like that. Now, one thing I want to say is you're never supposed to make repairs to anything that is um, not locked out or has energy flowing to it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start out with lockout tagout. So since this is just a review and we've already gone over lockout tagout, I'm just going to do a quick rundown of all the steps. So step one, notify all the affected employees. So let's do that. Hey, everybody, we're going to lock this out. Now you probably want to actually walk around and talk to people, but typically when I get time to film, there's nobody here around. So make sure you notify all your infected employees. Those are affected employees are things like operators, maybe possibly um, your supervisors, things like that. All right. Now let's talk about step number two. Step number two is going to be locking out and isolating your piece of equipment. Typically when you're working on some electrical, you're going to be going back to a knife switch like this a plug end like this where you're going to put like a uh, one of those lockout covers over the top of it or you're going to take it back to a breaker and now we want to make sure that you have the correct device um, depending on what you're working on like i said this one's going to have that special little cover there's a special breaker lockout um, we should have already gone over that stuff in the future or in the past so now for one of these all you got to do is take your lock make sure it's got your tag so it's identic you can be identified you know put it in here lock it Pull your key out, put it in your pocket, make sure you don't give it to your buddy or anything like that. On to number three. Step number three is gonna be about verifying that your energy has been locked out or isolated. Now, the easiest way to do it is to get a multimeter like this. Um, I think you can, there might be some other tools out there, but I would highly recommend just having a multimeter. We're gonna go ahead and put ours on volts over here, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about these as we continue on in the class. Um, and then we're gonna go up here, and this is gonna be our transformer. Now, on the transformer, we're gonna to go to the top leads, which are right here and right here, and we're gonna check and see if we have any verified energy, okay? And you can see clearly on the face there that there's, there's nothing, okay? You may also just check around, maybe you can check down here just in case to make sure there's nothing coming out, maybe you got a bad connection when you were testing up here. Um, it never hurts to do over testing, but you should always refer back to your uh, schematic when you want to go ahead and find the test points. Okay, so step four is uh, the step where you would actually make a repair, but being it's pretty hard to catch me actually working, we're going to go ahead and just uh, not make a video about that, and we're just going to say step four, make sure that you go ahead and make all your repairs, all, all the necessary repairs to that machine, all right? Let's move on to step number five. Now that all the repairs are done, you need to make sure you notify all the affected employees that the repairs are done, right? So let's do that right now. Hey, I'm done making the repairs. Yeah, there's there's nobody here at all. All right, so now that we've uh, notified everybody that, hey, we're gonna be uh, unlocking this, um, maybe we've made sure that they're gonna be at a safe distance because we're gonna be re-energizing it here in a second, we can go ahead and we can take our key, unlock the, uh, unlock the lock here, pull it off, and then you're ready to go ahead. Now again, if you're working with a plug where you had the, the cap over the top of it, you could possibly just unhook this, plug it back in the wall, or you could pull your lock off of that uh, breaker that you'd possibly be using, all right? Um, so that pretty much clears up uh, lockout tagout, and I'm not kidding, that's about as fast as I could possibly do it. There are some other little proper procedures, you know, the type of locks you use and things like that, um, but we've already went through that before, so if you have any questions on lockout tagout, please refer back to the safety section. Uh, otherwise, I think you're good to go. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna talk about arc flash protection. Typically, the kind of boxes you're gonna be working in will look just like this one right here. When you're working inside of them, you're doing things like troubleshooting and nothing else, all right? Sometimes there's certain situations where you cannot de-energize it. Usually this happens at power plants, things like that, where there's no possible way to de-energize. Otherwise, there's no reason 
to not have it locked out, okay? And again, you're only allowed to be troubleshooting, okay? Everything in this next section will be for when you're troubleshooting. So first thing first, we're gonna talk about this little, uh, this little sticker right here, sticker right here, okay? Let's get a close up on it. All right, so this is the sticker we were gonna talk about. Now, this sticker should be on any uh, PLC box or anything like that where you could possibly be working inside of while it's energized, okay? It's gonna always have the nice warning label right here. It's gonna say it's arc flash. Um, and it's gonna talk about the hazards and appropriate PPE requirements, all right? So we're just gonna go down this list and we're gonna talk about that. And then at the end, we're gonna go over our, um, our boundaries and our approaches a little bit more in depth, okay? So the first thing we're gonna start off with about, or start off here is flash hazard category. Now, what this is saying is if you're within 18 inches of this, you can receive a second degree burn. All right, so that 18 inches is really important, which it gets kind of confusing because you've also got these other boundaries right here, but these ones are saying like who can be inside of that area. They're saying anybody within 18 inches of this that has a arc flash needs to be um, aware that you could be get a second degree burn. Okay, the next thing is the rating for the heat. Um, it's, it's just talking about how hot that could get. And you remember back from the other videos that it could be upwards of uh, 30,000 degrees. And they start measuring that stuff in Kelvins and Kelvins is quite, uh, quite intense. So we're, we're not gonna get into that in our, this particular video. If you have any questions and wanna know more about Kelvins and that measuring system, let me know. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is just the flash protection boundary. This boundary um, is just kind of when you need to start making sure you're wearing your PPE and things like that. It's kind of redundant because it has to do with um, some of these approaches right here, but you just want to make sure that you, if you're within three inches of this thing, you're wearing your, all the appropriate PPE, even though it comes down here and it has one inch, okay? So we're gonna go over the PPE that's listed here, and not all of these have a listed PPE. This one's kind of nice and actually has it. Um, the, what's required on this one is safety glasses and goggles, and a non-melting shirt. Typically that's a cotton, 100% cotton shirt, or maybe a Nomex, um, and they're usually long-sleeved, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. The shock, the shock protection is gonna be 480 volts of shock hazard when the cover is removed or panel is open, okay? So if this is open, you have the possibility of being shocked by 480 volts. Next, we're gonna go over all of these boundaries. So you got your limited approach, which is gonna be your furthest away approach at 42 inches. You got your restricted approach, which is at 12 inches. And then you got your most close or up close approach, which is called your prohibited approach at one inch, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at those a little bit more realistically. All right. So let's start talking about our approaches. And this is pretty much the radius as to which you can be inside. And they have certain rules depending on the, the settings or the different types, let's call it. So the first one is gonna be your limited approach. Now this should be your furthest out distance. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna measure away here. And I've got 42 inches right here. Now within this 42 inch range, outside of the 42 inches, that is not within inside that 42 inches, you're allowed to, this needs to be a qualified person because you're still in a dangerous area. Now, there are some instances where you can bring somebody who is, per se, unqualified with you as long as they're accompanied by somebody who is qualified, all right? Now, our next approach or boundary is gonna be that 12-inch one. It's called the restricted area. Now, inside of that restricted area, you have to be um, authorized and properly trained, and you're gonna have to make sure you're wearing your PPE, okay? So let me go show you how far this is away. So now you're gonna be within this, if this panel was open. Remember, this panel's open the whole time, right? So 12 inches, restricted boundary. The next one is only gonna be one inch. So if you're within inside that one inch, you're probably gonna be doing a lot of the work. And that area is called the prohibited boundary or approach. Now this, that one inch there, only people allowed inside that are gonna be the people that are properly trained, they know the risks, they're wearing their PPE, um, and they're more than likely know the hazards of actually touching some of that equipment, maybe using their multimeters and things like that. So those are gonna be your approaches. Just remember, you got your limited, which is the furthest way, that's at 42 inches. You're restricted, which is that 12 inch or 12 inch long one. And then you have your prohibited, which is the, the main one that we gotta be watching for. And one last thing that I forgot to talk about was the PPE class. And it's written right down here. It's kind of hard to see. 
So the PPE class is going to be what levels of protection you need to be wearing. Um, we're going to go ahead in a second here and we're going to talk about all the different classifications. Um, just know, that always be looking for that PPE class and whatever number that is, you can always go back and um, see what uh, type of protection you need to be wearing, okay? Okay, so let's spend a minute talking about the PPE. Now, PPE for our flash protection comes in five different levels. We're going to start with a zero level, a one, two, and a three four level okay four levels or five levels but it starts with zero and ends with four okay now for the purpose of this class and probably the kind of work that you're going to do in your career as a maintenance employee you're never going to break out of say level one all right so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over level zero and level one now there's only really one addition or two additions to the level one that the level zero doesn't have. So we're going to go over all of this stuff. Everything's going to be for both. And then I'm going to talk specifically about those two items. All right. So the first item is going to be your safety glasses. Just like this, any ANSI approved safety glasses are, are, uh, are going to be good for this particular PPE item here. Okay. Um, second thing, you're going to need hearing protection. Now, the, the only real rule for the hearing protection is it needs to be a plug style hearing protection. It can't be um, the big the big earmuffs. So if you're an earmuff fan, you're kind of you're kind of stuck here. You need to have the the ones inside of your ears. I believe that so if there is a blast, it doesn't blow them right off your head. Okay. Um, but as far as the ear protection is concerned, there's not a decimal rating on that. It just needs to be a plug style. So moving on to the hand protection, and the first thing we're going to talk about here, or the, the only real hand protection we're going to talk about, is the leather over rubber gloves. And you'll hear these referred to quite a bit. Um, if you, pretty much for any type of work you're going to be wearing, these rubber, these leather over rubber gloves, all the different levels until you get to like the top few that have some really specific type of gloves. So you put the, the rubber glove on first, and then you're going to just slide your hand into the leather glove. Let's try to get that puppy on. There we go. They're actually not too bad to work with, but a uh, few things you need to know. These are not just a regular work glove. These are not just a regular rubber glove. These are specially rated for the, the electricity, okay? Um, one thing is you need to inspect them before any use, and they need to be um, specifically inspected every six months. I believe that's with a water test as they call it or an air test where they fill them up with water and then they see if they leak or they fill them up with the air and see if they uh, they have anything escape. Okay um, but again make sure you're checking make sure there's nothing there's no holes in the the palm of the hand um, because that can create a better path to uh, for the electricity to pass through your body. All right so let's move on. Next thing we're going to talk about is just your general clothing. The general clothing that's required is any long sleeve shirt. Let me get that out here. Uh, any long sleeve shirt um, that is 100% cotton. Um, typically, this will come in the form of whatever your work uniform is. That's why they usually do long sleeves and they usually do 100% cotton for these. Um, we have a full on jumpsuit here. You don't, it doesn't need to be a jumpsuit because you're also required to wear pants that are 100% cotton too. Typically, your jeans are 100% cotton, so this kind of gets gets you out of that, that level. We have the full-on jumpsuit because if uh, a student comes in and he's not wearing the correct clothing, we can just put, put on the whole jumpsuit. Um, otherwise, long pants, 100% cotton, long t-shirt, 100% cotton. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about, that's for everything for level zero, right? So now we're going to talk about level one. Level one, the, there's only two differences, and that's the type of shoes you're wearing and face protection and that's going to be in the form of the, the face protection is going to be an actual face shield with a hard hat so i guess it's kind of like the head protection you're going to wear a 100 percent cotton um, head sock and then you're going to need to have a face shield that has this um, tint on it it has to be a green um, like blast tint they actually make it special for this so you just want to make sure that you're not using a clear or even one that's like maybe a welding style one you gotta make sure you have this one. And it's gotta be any approved, ANSI approved hard hat. All right? Now, again, and any, any head sock, I guess, would work too. Now, for the shoes, the shoes that are required are they're uh, a, a slip resistant and like they are, they're made, they're just a, pretty much any work shoe is made so that it cannot have electricity travel through the sole. 
I kind of I want to talk about this one a little bit more specifically because I probably would wear these shoes at all times, whether it be what your level one required or, or level zero required. Okay, but um, just make sure you're wearing some the protective shoes that you have you that are for this. Again, if you go to and buy any work shoe, they pretty much have that. Um, there's not going to be a steel toe in it. It might be a composite toe if you need to have those hard toe. Um, for this at your work site, make sure it's composite, make sure that it has that uh, the resistance to stop the electricity, all right? Um, otherwise, that completes our PPE section, and that kind of also completes our whole section on lockout, tagout, and arc flash protection. Like I said, main things I want to remind you about is inspect all your PPE. If you, it's possible or you're going to be doing any repair work, make sure you lock out your items, and if you um, and then if you need to be doing troubleshooting, you're, you're gonna be need, needing to make sure you're wearing that PPE and taking all the proper precautions, all right? Again, if you're going to be working with um, significantly higher voltages, um, something that requires a level two or a three or a four um, PPE, you probably should seek out and have specific training or um, be working with somebody who knows a, a very uh, high, or a high amount of information on our flash protection. Otherwise, that completes the whole class. Um, Go ahead and move on.